I'm going to show you the basics of using the terminal file navigator, Midnight Commander. We'll look at installing it and running it, switching directories, editing files, copying and moving, basic things like that. And we'll also look at connecting to remote hosts like FTP, SFTP, and file transfer over SSH. Midnight Commander runs on Linux, Mac, and Windows. I'll be demonstrating this on the Dev Dungeon mainframe, which runs Debian Linux. You can also have access to the Dev Dungeon server yourself and follow along with this tutorial if you become a member of our virtual hackerspace. Learn more at my.devdungeon.com. One way to get Midnight Commander is by going to their website. You can download or clone the source code if you want to build it from source, or you can go to the binary builds page. From here, you can download binaries already built for various Linux distributions, Mac, and Windows. In most Linux distributions, you can simply use your package manager to install Midnight Commander. In Debian, that's sudo apt install mc. In Mac, you can use homebrew package manager to install it with brew install mc. And in Windows, you can use the chocolatey package manager and use choco install mc. Once installed, you can check what version you have with mc dash dash version. If you want to execute it from the command line in Windows, you may need to manually add the path to your, your path environment variable, the C program files midnight commander. Otherwise, you will have to open it using the shortcut from the start menu if you're on Windows. If you don't know how to set up environment variables in Windows, you can check out the tutorial linked in the description. If you run mc-help, you'll get the execution options, although there isn't anything too exciting here. To run Midnight Commander, just execute MC. You can optionally provide the path that you want to open. Otherwise, it'll just open your current working directory. And you'll be presented with two main panes that will initially be the same directory. When you start, your cursor will be in the left pane, highlighting an entry. Use the up and down arrows or Emacs light -like keybinds, Control P and Control N, to move up and down in your selection. You can also use page up and page down as well as home and end to jump to the top and bottom. Press tab to switch between the left and right pane and to enter a directory just press enter while selecting that directory. To move up a directory press enter on the dot dot that represents the parent directory. Down at the very bottom you'll see a few menu items with numbers next to them. These numbers represent the F keys, the function keys. For example, 1 is F1. If you press F1, it'll pull up the Help menu. Press Escape to close the window. Number 2, the menu, corresponds to F2. If I press F2, I'll be presented with the list of options. You'll see some options like Do something on the current file, Compress the current directory, Copy file to remote host, Unzip current file, and many other options. Press Escape when you're done to close that window. Menu number three, or if I press F3, it'll open my currently selected text file for viewing. From this view, the menu items on the bottom change. Notice that number four for hex. If I press F4, then I'll be viewing it in hexadecimal mode. I can press F4 again to go back to ASCII text mode. I can also jump to a specific location by pressing F5. You can press escape, F10, or Q to exit the view mode and go back to your directory listing. Back in the main view here, notice the menu options for F5, F6, F7, and F8. These are common operations like copy, move, rename, and delete. F9, labeled pull down, triggers the menu up in the very top. If you press F9, you'll see the menu in the top activate. Then I can press left and right to choose the menu I want and press enter to open the menu. I'll start with the file menu. This gives you all kinds of options for your selected file. Everything from view and edit, copy, delete, and more. If I open the command menu from the top, you'll see some options related to the behavior of Midnight Commander. You can view a directory tree to change directories. You can swap the panels and many other things. If I open the Options menu, you'll get access to different configuration options. Note, if you're running Midnight Commander on a desktop environment like X Windows, you might have mouse support enabled and you can actually click on items even though it's in the terminal. 
The last two options in the top menu are the ones titled right and left. They both have the same options and refer to the left and right pane. Another really important part of Midnight Commander that I want to point out is the shell at the bottom. The shell always has the current working directory tied to your currently selected pane. For example, if I am in one directory on my left pane and I run a command, it will run in that directory. If I press tab and I'm in a different directory on the right pane, the commands will then be executed in that directory. In the shell, you can use CD to move directories and you'll notice that the visual pane moves with your current working directory. Normally, the output from your commands are hidden, but you can press Ctrl O to temporarily hide the navigator and see the whole shell output, and press Ctrl O again to bring the navigator back. Down in the shell, the same way that you can change directories, you can connect to a remote host. Here are some examples. You can connect to an SSH host using file transfer over SSH, known as FISH, or you can use SFTP over SSH. You can also connect to a regular FTP server. Once connected, you can navigate and transfer between the remote directory the same way you would a local one. Let me demonstrate this by connecting to the Dev Dungeon mainframe using my member account. I have an SSH account, so I can use the SFTP protocol. You can type in cd space SFTP colon slash slash your username at lab.devdungeon.com. Then it will ask me for my password. And then when I connect, you'll see that the pane is labeled with the remote host at the top. From here, I could view and edit or copy files back and forth. Well, that's everything I wanted to show you about Midnight Commander. This should give you a good foundation on how to do some basic file management and transferring. If you want to learn more and find the latest information, visit the official website https colon slash slash midnight dash commander dot org. Before you go, check out some of my products and services. Register and join our virtual hackerspace to get your own email account at devdungeon.com, a chat account, and SSH access to our Linux mainframe, which includes personal web space, Git storage, and other member-only perks. Join at my.devdungeon.com. Take my courses, working with binary data in Python 3, and deploy Django on Linux. Visit devdungeon.com slash courses. Buy my book, Security with Go. Visit devdungeon.com slash books. If you use Discord, Kathy is a fun chatbot for your server. Visit kathy.devdungeon.com. If you have a website, sign up with Apora to get notified if your site goes down. Visit apora.net. Bookmark devdungeon.com for reference and learning. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash devdungeon. Donate directly via PayPal at devdungeon.com slash donate.